Okay, in this video we are talking about functions, the heart of all of algebra. You could honestly say college algebra is the study of functions. So what is a function? A function, here's our definition, is a rule that assigns to each element from one set exactly one element from a second set. That first set where we get all of our inputs from is called the domain. The function takes elements from the domain, assigns them over to elements from the range. These are all our inputs. The range is the set of all the outputs. In a college algebra class, typically the domain will be the set of all of our allowed x values, and then the range will be the set of all of our y values. It doesn't have to be that way. We could easily have functions where we use other variables besides x and y, or we could even, if we wanted to, have functions where y's are the inputs and x's are the outputs. But we typically wait until about pre-calculus to do that. Here, in a college algebra class, usually our inputs are x's, our outputs are y's. So a function takes elements from one set and maps them over to elements from the second set. So the first question we want to ask here is, does this picture that I've called f represent a function? Is f a function? And the question is, does every input over here have a line going over to exactly one output? Does every input have exactly one output? And the question, or the answer here is yes, it does. Yes f is a function. Every input has exactly one output. I like to say a function is like a vending machine. You go to a vending machine, you hit E7, and you get a Snickers. Somebody comes behind you, they hit E7. What are they going to get? They're going to get a Snickers. If you use the same input, you're going to get the same output. That's what makes something a function. Okay, so now let's talk function notation. This is when the trouble starts, right here. If I write this group of symbols, what does that mean? Typically when we see things sitting next to each other, especially with parentheses, we tend to think multiplication. That's not what this means. This is not multiplication. That is not f times 1. This is f of 1. And it means use the function you've named f to give me the output when the input is 1. There's my input. I'm asking for the output. So in this case, f of 1 is 2. The 1 is my x value, my input. The 2 is my y value, the output that goes with that input. Okay, so using this same function here, f, what would uh, f of 7 be? And it's pretty obvious. Come over here, look at 7, come over, the answer is 8. 7 the input, that's my x value. 8 the output, that's my y. Okay, what if I asked for f of 9? What, you look here at the picture and you think, um, well, there's, there's no 9. I don't know what to do. But we, we said here it's a function. Every input has to have an output. Here I've got an input and I don't know what the output is. That must mean this is not one of the inputs. We can't do this. It's not, it's not allowed. It's not one of the inputs. Well, what did we call all of the inputs? The domain. So, First, we would say, we can't do this. This does not exist. We abbreviate that D and E. Does not exist. Why? Because 9 is not in the domain. It's not one of the allowed inputs. Over here is a set 
a collection, a box of all my allowed inputs. Over here we have all the outputs that we're going to get. Nine's not in that set. It's not one of the allowed inputs. That's the definition of domain, the set of all allowed inputs. So what is the domain? The domain of F is this set, this collection of inputs we're allowed to use. And when we can actually list them all out, we use these little curly braces. One, three, order doesn't matter here at all. When we're making a list, I can put these in any order I want. That's the domain, the set of all allowed inputs. And this collection over here is the range of F. And that's the collection of all the outputs we actually use for the function. Again, I can put these in any order I want. When we're actually listing out domain or range, when we can list every single element, we use these curly braces and we put them in whatever order we want. Okay, let's look at more examples. In each of these cases, we want to ask ourselves, is the relation we're looking at a function? And if it is, we'll find the domain and range. Okay, so here with G, is this a function? And the answer is no. The input two here has two different outputs. So you go to a vending machine, you hit E7, sometimes you get a Snickers, sometimes you get a whatchamacallit. You don't want that vending machine. You're not gonna be happy. You wanted a Snickers. You don't wanna to have to guess, what am I gonna get this time? Mathematicians are the same. We don't like guesswork. We want to know if we put in a certain input, we want to guarantee what the output will be. Here with G, there's guesswork. Sometimes two spits out of five, sometimes it spits out of seven. So G here is not a function. Can't have repeated inputs. Okay, what about H here? Is H a function? And you may be saying, well, no, it's not, because look, I've got this repeat over here. We don't care about over here. We honestly, we don't care what's going on over here for the most part. What we care about when we're asking is h a function is does every x value, everybody over here have exactly one line coming off? And yes, we don't care if two different buttons on the vending machine both give you a Snickers. That's what happens a lot. Sometimes E6 and E7 will both give you a Snickers. As long as E7 always gives you a Snickers and every button's the same like that, then you've got yourself a function. So here, H is a function. Okay, so what is the domain of H? We'll abbreviate that with just D for domain. The domain is the set of all allowed inputs. Eight, one, four, nine. And the range, we'll abbreviate that with just R. Over here, all of our outputs are two. We hit two twice, but we don't care. We're just making a list here. We don't have to list two twice. If we've listed it, we've listed it. 14 and 6. Okay, let's move on to this xy chart. Does this represent a function? Does every input have exactly one output? In other words, do we have any repeats over here in our list of x's? We've got some repeated y's, but we don't care about that. We only care about are there any repeated x's? This is a function. There are no repeated x's. Okay, and finally this one. We have this xy chart. Does this represent a function? No, look right here. The input one has two different outputs. Sometimes one spits out a two, sometimes it spits out an 11. This would not be a function. Now the key here is not that one popped up twice, it's that we had two different y values over here for the same x value. If this had read 2 and 2, then there's no problem. It, 1 always goes to 2. That's not a problem. It's the fact that this input 1 has two different outputs. 
not a function. Okay, another way to represent a function is by a graph. Okay, so say we have this graph here. We want to know, first off, does this graph represent a function? Does every input, every x value, match up with one and only one y? Well, to check that, we do what's called the vertical line test. The vertical line test says, hey, somebody gives you a graph. You're handed a graph. That graph represents a function. If you draw every possible vertical line you could in your mind, check and see if everyone intersects, intersects the graph at most once. In other words, you want to look at your graph, see if you can find a vertical line that hits the graph twice or more than once. So let's look at, say, this vertical line right here. How many times does that hit the graph? None. I'm not talking about the x-axis. I'm talking about the graph. This line doesn't hit the graph. It's okay. It's not more than one. Zero is not more than one. What about this line? Hits the graph once, right there. This line hits the graph once, right there. Right there right there. Every vertical line I could possibly draw would hit the graph at most once. I don't have any spots where there's a point on top of another point. This graph passes the vertical line test. This is a function. Okay, let's evaluate this function at a couple of points. Let's ask maybe what is f of zero. Meaning when x is zero, on the graph itself, on this curve, what is the y value of the point? So x is zero is right here. I'm talking about that point right there. The y value there is four. So the point, 0, 4 is on the graph. That's all we're saying. It's just a point on the graph. The inside the function here, that's my x value, my input. Over here is my y value. Okay, what if I asked for what is f of negative 1? Okay, so we look on the graph. When x equals negative 1, I'm talking about that point right there. What is that y value? That looks to be 0. f of negative 1 is 0. That's my x value. That's my y value. Okay, what about oh, f of 3? So we're over here on the graph. Here's x equals 3. We're talking about this point right there. Well, that's not as obvious as some of the others looks to be a little more than two. We're not 100% sure what it is, but we could guess at it. I would say f of three is approximately 2.3 maybe. There's my x value, my y value of that point right there. Okay, what if I asked for f of eight? The graph stops at 7. It doesn't go to 8. 8's over here. When x equals 8, there's no y value there. This does not exist. There's nothing there. Again, d n e does not exist. But we just said it's a function. Every input has to have an output. How can I not have an answer here if this is a function? That must mean that this number here is not one of the allowed inputs. It's not in the domain. The domain is the set of all inputs we're using for our particular function, all the x values. So let's find the domain. Okay, so we're talking about x values here. For domain, we're looking horizontally. What x values am I using? Now, I can't just list them off like I did before. I can't play this game here where I could write them all out because I've got an infinite number of them. Negative four is one of my inputs.
volts, negative 3.7, 1.25, about here, has a y value. Pi, 3.14, 159, and so forth, is about right here, it's got a y value. All of these x values, all along here, all get used. They're all part of the domain. It's impossible to list, list them out, so we have to use interval notation. We have to write this as an interval. And remember, intervals are always, 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 always smaller, comma, larger. So for domain, I'm looking horizontally. I want to ask, what's the smallest x value I use? And then what's the largest x value I use? So I'm looking at my x-axis here. I'm using all of these x values. So my domain is going to be x is greater than or equal to negative 4 and less than or equal to 7. How do I know equal? Because of this solid dot right there. Because we have a solid dot, we put an equal to here. Same thing over here at the 7, we've got the solid dot, so we put the equal. Okay, now we're going to write this as an interval. Interval smallest, comma, largest, negative 4, comma, 7, with brackets. Why brackets? Because we have the equal to. If we have a solid dot at our endpoint, we use the equal to, we use a bracket. If this had been an open circle, we would not have the equal, we would have a parenthesis. We'll do examples like that in a minute. Okay, so the domain, the collection of all the x values we're using for the function. What about the range? Range is asking what y values are we using for the function. Now we're looking vertically. We're looking up and down. What's the smallest, always smallest to largest, smallest y value we use, up to what's the biggest? The smallest y value I use is down here at negative 3. And then I'm using all these in between here, up to 5. Now, a lot of these y values get used more than once. This 4, for example, gets used there, gets used there. 2 gets used here, and here, and here. 2 is getting used a bunch of times. Don't care about that. Don't care that some of the y values are used more than once. All we're asking is, what's the smallest y value? What's the biggest? And do you use everything in between? And yes, we do. So we're going from negative 3 up to 5. So the range would be negative 3 is less than or equal to y. Again, y equal to, because we have a solid dot at the negative 3. And y is less than or equal to, what's my biggest y value I'm using? Not here at 4, I'm using all these y values too, up until 5. Again, that is an interval. We'll always write domain and in interval notation when we have these continuous sets. That's negative 3 to 5. That's the range of this function. Okay, let's look at more examples. Okay, we want to ask, does the graph represent a function? And if it does, we'll find the domain and range. Okay, let's look at f. Does this pass the vertical line test? Yes, that's all we got to do. Vertical line test passes it is a function. So I'll just write, yes, is a function. Domain. What x values are we using? Looking horizontally. Let's stick with green for domain. I'm using all of these x values. Smallest, comma, largest. The smallest is negative 3. The largest is positive 1. Here at negative 3, I have an open circle, though. I don't actually use negative 3. I get as close to it as I can, but I don't actually touch it. We represent that with parentheses. But the 1 has a solid dot. We do actually use 1. 1 gets a bracket, square bracket. Parentheses with open circles, solid dot goes with bracket. 
Okay, what about the range? Range is vertical. Going down and up. What y values am I using? Don't care if I use them more than once. What's the smallest to largest? Smallest y value is negative 4. The largest is 7. Do I use the negative 4? No, it's got an open circle. That gives me a parenthesis. Do I use the 7? Yeah, there's a solid dot there. You don't see it. We don't emphasize it. We don't draw a big giant dot right there. But keep in mind, all of these are solid dots. Every point here is a solid dot. We only emphasize it on the endpoints because that's where there's ambiguity. So yes, there's a solid dot right there. We use a square bracket. Hey, G here, does this represent a function? No. That vertical line right there, in particular, hits the graph more than once. No, not a function. What about M? I ain't even bother to put numbers on here. It should be obvious. This vertical line right there hits the graph more than once. Hits it there and there. Not a function. H. Does this graph represent a function? Every possible vertical line you could draw would hit the graph at most once. No line would hit it twice. This is a function. So what is my domain and what is my range? Domain is the set of all x values we're using. <coughs> what x values are we using? Well, I'm using all of these x values. This graph goes on forever in both directions. I'm using every one of the x values. You give it an x value, I'm using it. How far back does this go? What's at the end of the line back here on the negative side? Negative infinity. Do I actually touch negative infinity? Remember, a solid dot gives you a bracket when you touch it. Open circle gives you a parenthesis if you don't. You can't touch infinity. Infinities always get parentheses, always. Okay, how high do we go? This goes up to positive infinity, again with the parentheses. This goes on forever in both horizontal directions. Okay, what about vertically? The range. Now we're looking at the y values. Looking up and down. What's the smallest y value I'm using? How low does this go? Well, it starts right here and uses all of these y values. What's the smallest one there? What is this y value right here? That's zero. Am I actually touching that? Absolutely, right there. There's a solid dot right there. It's a bracket, comma. How high does it go? That goes on forever to infinity. Intervals are always smaller, comma, larger. Okay, and finally here, L. This graph named L. Is this a function? Vertical line test. I can't find a vertical line that would hit the graph twice. So yes, this is a function. So my domain and my range. Domain, I'm looking horizontally. I'm looking here at the x-axis. And it looks to me like we're using all of these x values here, from negative 3 up to 7. Negative 3 to 7. Okay, then we got to decide brackets or parentheses. Here at negative 3, I've got an open circle. Open circle is a parenthesis. Over here at 7, I've also got an open circle. Parenthesis. Okay, range. Range is vertical. Looking up and down. Smallest to largest, not left to right down to up. Smallest y value I'm using right here, negative 6. I use all these, I use all these, all the way up until 10. Some of these y values get used twice, don't care at all. I'm using all of them in between negative 6 and 10. Negative 6 to 10. Did I actually touch negative 6? No, I have an open circle, so parenthesis. Same thing at 10. I've got that open circle there, so parenthesis at 10. 
Okay, another way to represent functions is by giving a formula. This is by far the most common. This is what this is what you do in college algebra. You have a function, some formula, and you have to find domain range. You have to graph it. You have to evaluate it. A lot of stuff we have to do with our functions. Now, the first question is, is this even a function? Well, there's a, a incredibly difficult theorem to prove in mathematics that says, if you've got a formula and it's written down in one single line, it's automatically a function. Uh, we'll talk about piecewise functions in a later video. Piecewise functions, you have to check. This isn't piecewise. This is guaranteed to be a function. So I don't have to check that. If somebody hands you a function or something they claim is a function and it's written down in one single line, it is a function. What about domain? I just got a formula here. I could get out my graphing calculator and try to graph it and look at the picture. And if we were asking for range, that's what we would need to do. But what about domain? Well, I'm kind of lying to you right now. I technically have not given you a function. This is just a formula. If I hand you a formula, I'm supposed to also tell you what domain I want you to use. That's the way it's supposed to work. I give you a formula. And I say, here, use these x values. This is what I want you to use. But mathematicians are lazy, and we usually don't do that. Usually, we'll just hand you a formula, and we expect you to know this. If somebody hands you a formula, the domain that they're expecting you to use, unless they state otherwise, is what's called the natural domain. And that's the largest set of real numbers that makes sense in that formula. The largest set of numbers you can plug in as long as you don't break any rules. Now, in real life situations, that would depend on the physical situation. If you're talking about the number of postage stamps you're going to buy, it doesn't make any sense to buy half a postage stamp. So your domain then would just be whole numbers. If you're talking about throwing a rock off a building, Negative times wouldn't make any sense. So your domain would just be positive real numbers and so forth. But if somebody hands you a formula and says, figure out the domain, what they mean is find all the real numbers you can plug in that don't break any rules. Well, what are our rules? What are things that don't make sense? We'll add to this list later, but for college algebra, for now, the rules are you can't divide by zero and you can't take square roots or really any even root of a negative number. Later on, we'll add extra things to that list. You can't take logs of zero. You can't take logs of negatives. Tangent has domain issues. There are other rules that we learn later. But for now, this is all you worry about. You can't divide by zero. You can't take square roots or fourth roots or sixth roots of negative numbers. Okay, so I have this formula. If I hand you this, I expect you to be able to say, oh, well, the domain is all the numbers I'm allowed to plug in here as long as I don't divide by zero and I don't take any square roots of negatives. Okay, so looking here, first thing I ask myself is, is it possible I'm going to accidentally plug in numbers and divide by zero? Well, no, there's, there's no dividing here. There's not a division symbol anywhere. There's no way you could accidentally divide by zero. So I don't have to worry about that. What about square roots of negatives? There's no square root symbol. I don't have to worry about either of those issues that might come up. So then the domain is the largest set of real numbers that exists. All real numbers. Negative infinity to infinity. That's the set of allowed inputs, the stuff I'm allowed to plug into this function. Okay, so let's plug some stuff in. If I wrote this group of symbols, that means replace all x's 
with a 1 in parentheses. So f of 1 is 1 squared minus 3 times 1 plus 4. f of 1 means rewrite this formula, write everything you see. But now instead of writing x, replace whatever is here with whatever is here. Replace all the x's with a 1. So what is that? 1 squared is 1 minus 3 times 1. So 3 times 1 is 3 plus 4. So what is that? 1 minus 3 is negative 2 plus 4 is 2. So f of 1 is 2. In other words, that's an x value. That's a y value. All we did, we literally just made an xy chart and we said when x is 1, y is 2. Or another way of saying that is the point 1 comma 2 is on the graph of this function. If we were to graph it out, that's one of the points on the graph. Okay, what if I said find f of, oh I don't know, negative 5. That just means replace every instance of x with a negative 5 in parentheses. Okay, negative, you got this is why I say you got to do it in parentheses, you got to be careful. Negative 5 squared means you have to square the negative. A negative times a negative is a positive. That's 25. Negative 3 times negative 5 is plus 15, plus 4, which is, what is that, 40 plus 4, 44. So when x equals negative 5, the y value that goes with it is 44. Put that here on our xy chart if we wanted to. We don't have to do this, but we could if we wanted to. Hey, what if I said, find me f of triangle? Remember, this formula that we've written here, we're just being lazy. Really, the formula, if we wanted to write this out in words, the function f says, take your input and square it, then subtract 3 times the input plus 4. Another way to write it would be f of stuff is stuff squared minus 3 times stuff plus 4. That's the formula. So whatever is sitting here, no matter what it looks like, replaces all the x values in parentheses. So f of triangle would be triangle squared in parentheses minus 3 triangle plus 4. Which, of course, we can't simplify. We don't know what triangle is. But this is evaluating functions. So what if I asked for f of a plus b. So we're going to follow the same pattern. Whatever is sitting here, we're going to write here and here, rewriting everything else, but now instead of writing x's, I'm going to write a plus b. So I will have, in parentheses, a plus b squared minus 3 a plus b plus 4. f of anything is that thing squared minus 3 times that thing in parentheses plus 4. Okay, let's look at some more. Let's look at a new function. Say we have this thing here. New function, I've reused the name f now, it has nothing to do with that last function f. f of x is x plus 7 over x minus 2. Let's ask, first off, it's guaranteed to be a function. It's written down in one single line. What is f of 5? But that just means rewrite everything you see, but now instead of writing x, we're going to write 5 where every x was. 
So instead of x plus 7, 5 plus 7. Instead of x minus 2, 5 minus 2. 5 plus 7 is 12. 5 minus 2 is 3. We get 4. f of 5 is 4. Okay, what if I ask for f of 2? Well, that would be 2 plus 7 over 2 minus 2, replacing all the x's with the 2, which would be 9 over, uh-oh, well, we just ran into trouble. We just, we have 0 in the bottom. And we know we're never, ever allowed to divide by 0. Get out your calculator and check it. You can't do 9 divided by 0. It's undefined. It does not exist. So what does that mean? Does that mean this is not a function? No, I already told you. This is guaranteed to be a function, but functions have outputs for all of their inputs. This guy must not be an input. If you have a function that's a fraction, you have to check the domain. You're going to have issues. This thing here might be zero, and you're not allowed to divide by zero. Okay, so let's Let's play with that and see. I said the bottom can't be zero. Let's set the bottom equal to zero and solve. And we get x equals two. Now I always, every semester, I'll have somebody, I'll hand them a problem like this and I'll say find the domain and they'll do this. They'll circle that and see there's the domain. x equals two is the domain. I want you to imagine that you are a bouncer at some club or some restaurant. Your job is to keep people out that haven't been paying their bill. That's your job. And Dave, Dave hasn't been paying his bill. The owner of the restaurant said, look, listen, your job all day long, your only job is to keep Dave out of my restaurant. You know what this guy did? This guy let Dave in and kept everybody else out. Completely failed at his job could not have failed more horribly. This is literally the worst answer you could give for domain. This is not the domain, this is Dave. This is the one number you're not allowed to use. That's not the domain. The domain is everything except two. So the best way to say this is x minus two is not allowed to be zero. x is not equal to two. The domain is all reals except two. All real numbers except two. Well, we like to write domain in interval notation. So what would that look like? So let's draw a number line here. Here's two. How do we illustrate a number is bad? By giving an open circle. So, two's bad. Two's not allowed in the club. Two is Dave. It's been banned from the club. Everything else is good. All of these x values are good. All of these are good. So domain is the set of all the stuff that's good. All the green here is allowed in the club. The green is the domain. How do we write that? What well, intervals are always smaller to larger. I have two separate sections here. You kind of put a dotted line here. Look at this section here. That's separated from this. That's not one continuous piece. I'm going to have to write two separate pieces of domain. Smaller to larger. What's the smallest number back here? How far back does this go? Negative infinity. Up until when do, do I stop? Well, I have to stop at 2 because I've got this open circle. Did I touch negative infinity? No, you never touch infinity. Infinity always gets parentheses. Did I touch 2? No, there's an open circle there. 2. And then this piece over here. Now we've started over. Smaller to larger. What's the smallest number in this piece? Right here, it starts at 2, comma, how high does this go? That goes all the way up to positive infinity. 
Infinity always gets parentheses. 2 has an open circle on it. It gets a parenthesis. We have two separate pieces. One last step, we put this U in between them to stand for U. This is the domain of this function. Anytime you have one of these fractions where you've got x's in the denominator, set the bottom not equal to zero to find the excluded values, the daves. Your domain then is everything except those values. Okay, let's look at another example. Okay, so we have this function. It's guaranteed to be a function. It's written down in one line. First thing we want to check before we start plugging in numbers is what's the domain. There are only two things we have to worry about right now. Am I going to divide by zero? No, not here. There's no dividing. I don't have to worry about dividing by zero. Am I going to take a square root of a negative? Possibly. I might take a square root of a negative. So I need to make sure the bottom is not negative. How do we say that? By saying not negative, greater than or equal to zero. Not negative is greater than or equal to zero. So anytime we have one of these square roots or any even root, this could be fourth, sixth, anything like that, take the inside, set it greater than or equal to zero, and solve. We know how to solve this. That's x is greater than or equal to 10. Just move the 10 over. We could draw that on the number line. Here's 10. Greater than or equal to, equal to is solid dot. Greater than, I want to go to the right. These are all the good guys. This is the stuff I'm allowed to use. 10 and greater. So now we write this in interval notation. What's the smallest number I've shaded? 10. Bracket because of the closed dot. Comma, how far did I shade? Infinity. There's the domain of this function g. From 10 to infinity. Okay, a few more examples. We'll find the domain in each of these. Okay, here with h of x. We're asking what's the domain. There are only two things we have to worry about right now. Dividing by zero, square roots of negatives. In this function, there's no dividing. Don't have to worry about dividing by zero. There are no square roots, there are no roots at all. There's nothing to worry about here. So the domain, sometimes people write no domain. That doesn't make any sense. You have to have a domain. There are no bad guys, there are no daves. The domain is all real numbers. Everybody is good. Everybody gets into the restaurant. Okay, what about k of x here? Two things we've got to worry about. Dividing by zero, square roots of negatives, or any even root of negatives. This is a cube root. We can take a cube root of anything. You can take cube roots of negatives. You can't take square roots or fourth roots or sixth roots of negatives. There are no issues here. Domain, it's all real numbers. Negative infinity to infinity. Okay, moving on. M of x. No roots here. I don't have to worry about square roots of negatives, but I am dividing. I have to make sure the bottom is not zero. I don't care about the top at all here. I only care about the bottom. x plus 6 cannot be zero meaning x is not allowed to be negative 6. That's an interval. Here's negative 6. Open circle to say it's bad. Everything here is good. Everything here is good. This interval here, smaller to larger. Negative infinity, comma, negative 6, parentheses on both sides. This interval here, smaller to larger, negative 6 to infinity, parentheses on both sides because of the open circle, and infinity always gets a parentheses, and we put a u in between them for union. That's the domain of m. 
in a vaccine. No dividing. I don't have to worry about dividing by zero, but I do have a square root. So I need 3 minus x to be greater than or equal to 0, which means I'll subtract the 3. Negative x is greater than or equal to negative 3. But nobody asked me about negative x. I want x, so I have to divide by negative 1. Remember, when you divide by a negative, you have to flip the inequality over. x is greater or it was already greater, less than or equal to 3. Because we divided by the negative, this inequality flipped over. x is less than or equal to 3. And if we graph that out on a number line, here's 3. Solid dot because it's equal to. Less than 3 is this set here. That's negative infinity to 3. There's my domain, negative infinity to 3. But wait a minute, you're yelling. You said x can't be negative. No, I never said that. I said this inside, 3 minus x, can't be negative. x can be whatever it wants as long as 3 minus x is positive. And if you plug in any number from this interval, say you plug in a negative 10, 3 Minus negative 10, 3 plus 10 is positive. We're fine. Okay, one last one. Now I've got both combined. I've got a square root and I'm dividing by x's. So from the bottom, x is not allowed to be 7. That makes the bottom 0. We can't divide by 0. From the top, x minus 5 has to be greater than or equal to 0, set the inside greater than or equal to 0, so x is greater than or equal to 5. So we need a number line here. I want greater than or equal to 5, everything bigger than 5. Oh, but I'm not allowed to use 7, so I need an open circle at 7. So this one's a little more complicated to write out. Here's my domain, smaller to larger. Every time I hit an open circle, I have to start over. I'm going to go from 5 to 7 and from 7 to infinity. So my domain will be, kind of running out of room here, 5 to 7. I actually touch 5. Solid dot here at the 5. So square bracket, up until 7, using all of that, parenthesis at 7 because of the open circle, union, because we're starting over, but we're on the other side of 7, this interval here, parenthesis 7 to infinity. That's the domain of this function. Okay, that's it.